And uh, one of the great things about having the invitation to come back into the community is to uh, celebrate uh, the change of spring and the new life that uh, uh, has come and the rebirth that has taken place. Uh, one of those components is the sugar bush. And uh, this week our focus is on very specific what does a Anishinaabe sugar bush look like. And so part of uh, this week's learning is building uh, tools that our ancestors used uh, uh, in times before us and uh, tools that we can still apply uh, in today's modern sugar bush. And one of the great things uh, that comes with that is the uh, ability to explore our own history as Anishinaabe people and uh, explore the way that science, um, we can learn so much from science on what's happening with inside of nature. Uh, we can equate many of the learning and lessons that come from uh, the school setting and environment and look at the sugar bush and uh, have conversations specifically about math and mass. Um, we can have conversations about uh, science and uh, what's happening in terms of the process of uh, the boil from coming from the trees and uh, being heated, uh, as well as we can link it into physical activity in collecting uh, the sap and moving around. And so when we look at what the benefits of land-based learning and culture-based education is, it, uh, it's one of the great things I think that the community is undertaking specifically with the children. I made it with coffee. I made coffee with it. I made hot chocolate with it. Um, I made it. We have been learning about sap, trees, and um, mother. 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 <laughs> mother ate two. Yeah. And then you get straight. I'll help you. Sap. Sap. Make, I'm gonna make sugar out of sap. And I actually recorded. I made candy out of sap. You can hurt yourself very bad. Gloves on. Especially with fire. Because you can get burned. It's very important for our children to have all this hands on learning. Because there's a lot of things, not just uh, our tr traditional ways of doing things. There's, there's a lot of science, there's a lot of math, there's a lot of all those different things, but they're learning it hands on. And I think they retain it a little bit more, in my opinion. They retain it a little bit, a little bit more with the storytelling, which is our way of doing things too. So, telling them stories about the reason why we gather and the reason why we do these things and the harvest and um, is very important for them to learn. Take all this stuff. Out. What are we going to use it for? What do you make it? things that we get a chance to do is uh, travel extensively to uh, First Nation communities and territories around the province of Ontario and uh, year-round um, we explore the uh, outside and our classroom and our environment of learning uh, is the outdoors 
this time of year we have uh, the spring and all of what the spring uh, brings to us. So we have the sugar bush, we have uh, waterfall hunting, um, and then we transition over into the next part, which is the summer season when we get into the paddle sports and being on the rivers, uh, learning about canoe safety, learning how to paddle canoes, uh, the fall harvest uh, that comes with big game animals, and then into the winter when we're uh, starting to trap and be out uh, as the waterways freeze and uh, spend our time out in uh, uh, the winter months, during the winter months. Uh, one of the uh, wonderful things that we have a chance to do is explore these different territories and uh, bring young men and women uh, outside with us. And uh, for many of them, uh, it's about accessibility. And uh, so this is a great opportunity as we come down here to the community to explore some of these uh, hidden gems that you have within your community and uh, also get to uh, experience some really wonderful country.